What's going on guys? This is Michael, Michael Anthony Photography, and thank you for checking out my article in this month's Shutter Magazine. Guys, this is the baby edition of Shutter Magazine. I'm not going to be talking much about babies today. Not that I dislike baby photography. I actually really love it. I just am not as good at baby photography as I am at wedding photography. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about off-camera flash and how to create magic using just a single flash on a wedding day. Uh, guys, a lot of people ask us about how we use our flashes during bridal prep, during receptions, during uh, different portions of the day. Now. Truthfully, uh, we do have multiple flash setups for many, many different uh, parts of the wedding day, but the majority of our work on the wedding day is done with just a single flash, and we use that in combination with ambient light in order to create an interesting dynamic. So we may use uh, a flash as a hair light during uh, a bridal prep when we're using that big soft window light as the primary light source. And the reason we do this is because portability uh, really, really plays a factor into wedding day logistics for a photographer. And we're gonna find natural light sources that are gonna create the most flattering light, and then we're gonna supplement those natural light sources with off-camera flash or video light or some other external light source. And the reason we do that, guys, I believe that using multiple light sources in an image will create an interesting dynamic and create different dimension um, in our client's photographs. So we can actually, just by adding a hair light, separate somebody off of the background, or just by adding a, a light on the background, we can actually just create a, a completely different looking photograph than what our client has ever seen before. We use off-camera flash and off-camera lighting extensively in our work. It is in our portfolio uh, very, very often in the first uh, two rows of pit photos that our clients see. And we do that because we wanna create different images that you know, our brides are not normally looking at when they're going through photographers' portfolios. I wanna be able to differentiate our studio and make something that our bride will be wowed at every time that they see uh, these photographs. So getting into that, there, we are gonna go uh, extensively into how we use flash on a wedding day in future articles. Uh, we're gonna break down specifics of what we do during a reception specifically because we get a lot of questions from you guys. Uh, but today what I wanna do is I wanna talk to you about how to get started using off-camera flash. Many of you guys may be intimidated by taking a flash off your camera. You might not know where to start when it comes to triggers and different types of lights and what kind of batteries you should use. And these are all great questions, guys, uh, and I want to help get you started. So basically, I'm just going to tell you what we did when we started. So when I started using uh, off-camera flash, I did so mainly because I was photographing weddings and receptions were very, very difficult to photograph using just an on-camera flash alone. I never got the light that I wanted. I never got that dynamic, that three-dimensionality in our photograph. So I bought a set of, uh, of cheap Sigma flashes. And um, it, at the time, I didn't even know uh, how to trigger them. I really just assumed that they would be able to talk to each other, um, which was only partly true uh, using the, the built-in infrared system. So eventually, I ended up getting some cheap triggers off of Amazon for $20 from uh, Cowboy Studio and uh, they worked really really well and I was able to uh, to set those lights up around my house and practice pretending like the center of my table was a dance floor I was able to move my lights around and see how the light shaped different objects on the table like a, a coke can or um, a fruit stand or whatever it may end up being um, that you use in your home and I was able to actually to see how the light changed as I moved the lights around uh, from there, I just jumped into weddings as a second shooter for um, some other photographers. I was able to experiment a little bit, and uh, and you know my clients' images weren't at stake because they weren't my clients at the time. And I suggest when you guys do get the opportunity to second shoot, use that as an opportunity to grow your skill set. Uh, it definitely it definitely will help you um, learn new trade, new learn new tricks as you progress uh, in your career. So. Guys, getting into uh, multiple flash setups, when I was able to, to learn how one light was shaping my subject, I was able to add additional light sources in order to make that image look just a little bit better. Now, pertaining to a wedding day, flash forward, we actually use, uh, we use ambient light primarily during the wedding day as our main light source. Our flashes are going to just supplement it. Now, of course, during a reception where there's no ambient light, that is a completely different story. However, for the most part during bridal portraits, during the getting ready portion of the day, we are using just a window light or a reflective light off of a, off of a building. Um, and then we combine that with a, with a uh, hair light or a rim light from our off-camera flash source to give us dimensionality in our pictures. So guys, what I suggest to you 
Get a cheap flash system. Yongnuo is a great system to start learning on. They are really inexpensive, they are really good quality, and the triggering system that, uh, that Yongnuo makes will, will allow you to step outside of your box. It's super easy to, to learn how to use. Set some stuff up in your house and just get comfortable with triggering your flashes, adjusting the power. Learn how the exposure triangle affects your flash, so your shutter speed, for instance. Many people don't know that adjusting your shutter speed when you're using normal sync speed on your flash is not going to adjust your flash power or your flash exposure. Um, these are things that when you experiment uh, on your own time, you'll be able to, to learn so that when it comes to a paying job, you are just uh, more comfortable and you can step right in there and you know exactly what your flash is going to be able to do for you on the wedding day. The second thing I really, really highly recommend is to get a flash meter, guys. Something like this is an invaluable tool on the wedding day. I honestly still use this for ambient light and for my flashlight. I feel like I can get a quick exposure even with ETTL mode and all of the technology that we have in our cameras. Uh, this is something that I just, I couldn't go without on a wedding day. I use it extensively and um, I suggest that you guys get one too because by using an accurate flash meter and calibrating it correctly, you'll be able to get your exposure and know exactly what your photograph's gonna look like before you even push the shutter button. And while it may seem like a small thing to be able to take test shots and, uh, and adjust as you're going, to your clients, if you're going back and forth from your camera to your flash, trying to get the light and the exposure right and the positioning right, um, it, it slows down the momentum and you're not interacting with them the same way that you should. So by adding a flash meter to your tool, tool bag, you'll be able to uh, quickly make the adjustments that you need, sometimes just in your head after using it so many times by, by experience. So definitely, definitely recommend investing in a flash meter. Sekonic makes some really amazing ones. This is a, uh, a Sekonic um, L758DR. It has a spot meter built in, but I suggest uh, starting out with their, their more basic models um, and working your way up if that's something that you, that you really need. Uh, next, guys, I want to talk about night photography. So a lot of you have seen our work and you know that at nighttime, we tend to take our bride and grooms out of the um, reception area to get some night photos to kind of close out their album and to give them a little bit of variety. And I suggest doing this as a way to kind of give them a chance to be together, number one, but also create some really, really interesting and amazing pictures. See, at nighttime, when there's no ambient light left, you can use your flashes in order to, uh, to create this really studio quality picture. And that's something that your competitors definitely are not doing. So by using a single flash, you can put a gel on it and you can actually take them outside, create a really quick silhouette. That's the closing shot in your album right there. Or you can use a multiple flash setup uh, maybe two lights, uh, a backlight, uh, a front light, or maybe even get into more, more lights than that. And you can quickly, quickly, quick, quickly make a creative picture uh, that your bride and groom um, will have absolutely no idea uh, what it's going to look like. And when they actually see the final product, they're going to absolutely freak out and, and love it. And it's something that uh, will set you apart from your competition. So one thing I really suggest when you're getting into night photography and you're getting into using corrective gels and stuff, which we'll talk about in future articles, uh, is the MagMod system. So um, they were at Shutterfest. And by the way, I had a, a great time meeting a lot of you guys at Shutterfest. Uh, but I ha also had a chance to purchase the MagMod system while I was there. And guys, I gotta tell you, this has changed the way that I use flash photography. It is so quick and easy to modify your flashes using these systems um, that these guys have set up for you that it just makes it, uh, makes it foolproof. No longer do you have to cut gels or um, buy a different, a whole bunch of different expensive modifiers and change, uh, change out every single time. Uh, these modifiers are really quick and simple. You grab them, you slap them on, you take them off, and you go. And they have uh, they have grids which um, make your flash photography so much more controlled. So take a look at their website, guys, and uh, and look at their products. I highly suggest adding that to your your uh, your flash bag, and you'll be able to use that to make. Um, your visions come true in your final photographs. So guys, again, getting into future articles, we're gonna talk about some really, really cool things in relationship to off-camera light. Again, I wanna thank you for checking out this article in Shutter Magazine, and I look forward to talking to you guys next month.